Welcome everyone, my name is Zach, and in this video I'm going to explain how I nearly doubled my salary in five years and how it's a lot easier than you might think. Since graduating from college and accepting my first professional position five years ago, I have increased my salary by 90% with just a few strategic decisions. Now this video is not focused on side hustles or any form of secondary income and is based purely on increasing your salary while working a single full-time job. Looking back at how I got to where I am today, I realized that I learned a lot of very valuable lessons that apply to almost anyone looking to advance their career. And I really wish I had known all of this before I entered the workforce. Now these tips are largely focused on people in the corporate world earlier on in their careers, but some might apply to people of any age or industry. Before we get started, one key thing to understand in the corporate world that we live in today is that human resources departments at the vast majority of companies have one primary goal for hiring and salary management and they don't really wanna talk about it. They wanna hire qualified people to perform the job at hand as cheaply as possible. They wanna pay their employees the minimum amount possible to not lose them and still get the job done. And this explains why a lot of employers will pay more for a new employee than they will to retain the employees that they already have. Once you're in the door, they wanna make you think that you're being treated fairly, but often really don't wanna follow through on that. I will say that I think these characteristics are a lot more common with larger companies, but right out of college, you're much more likely to land your first position at a large company. That's because these companies have a much higher tolerance for training new employees. In my experience, smaller companies and startups really wanna hire people with some experience that understand that particular industry and their role within it. For the record, I think starting at a large established company in your industry is a great way to get some experience on your resume. Okay, so first let me explain how I nearly doubled my salary in five years, and then I'll talk about the lessons I learned and some mistakes I made along the way. So I graduated from college five years ago with an engineering degree and started my first professional job a couple weeks later with a company called Company Number One. This company was fairly large and established in the industry and gave me a decent salary for an entry level employee, so I couldn't really complain. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna make up a starting salary so we have something to talk to, but the percentages are totally real from my experience. So to recap, I'm making up the starting salary, but the percentages are exactly what I got, so you can scale them however you want. So let's just say that my first job started me at $50,000 a year. Since I started in the summer, before their performance review process was over, I was actually eligible for a raise just six months later at the beginning of the next year. At this time, I got a 3.3% raise, which brought the salary to $51,650 a year. After grinding away for another year, now at one and a half years with company number one, I got another annual raise, this one at 3.5%, which brought the salary to $53,457. And later that year, after almost two and a half years with company number one, I got a promotion. And this came with a 10% raise, bringing my salary to $58,000 thousand eight hundred and three dollars and luckily with the way company number one did promotions they were out of sync with the annual raise process so I was eligible for another raise just a few months later. And at this time, I got another 3.5%, bringing my salary to $60,861. At this point, I started realizing that it would be a while before I would be eligible for another promotion at company number one, and that roughly 3% raises every year were quite underwhelming. So I started looking around at other companies in the area. And after looking around for a few months, I landed a job at company number two for an 18.2% raise. This brought my salary up to $71,938, which is a 44% increase in just three and a half years. For reference, company number two was about the same size as company number one, and they were in the same industry and location. Unfortunately, because I started so late in the year at company number two, I wasn't eligible for an annual raise until almost 15 months later, at which time I got another 3.5% raise. Is anyone else starting to notice a trend or is that just me? Anyway, this brought my annual salary to $74,456. Around this time, after almost a year and a half at company number two, I realized that my odds of promotion in the near future were not looking great, so I applied around to see my other options. I had a couple offers from different companies and ultimately received a great offer from, you guessed it, company number three. You'd think they'd be more creative with these names. Anyways, company number three was actually much smaller than companies one and two basically what most people would consider a startup. And they offered me an astounding 
27.4% raise, bringing the salary up to $94,857. And just like that, after five years in the workforce, my salary increased by 90%. Okay, now that the background's out of the way, let's talk about the takeaways and lessons I learned through the process so that you can use my experience to increase your own income and not make any of the mistakes I made along the way. The first takeaway, which you probably picked up on already, is that if you really wanna maximize your salary, you need to change jobs every one and a half to three years, at least for the first five to 10 years of your career. This doesn't always have to be to a different company as quite often you can apply to positions internally at the company you currently work for, but I would make sure that you can apply to higher level positions internally and still get a raise or promotion. Quite often in companies, they welcome internal candidates, but they want you to move laterally into the new position so they don't have to pay you more. So definitely avoid that. If you're applying outside of your current company, you'll be amazed how many companies wanna interview you once you have some experience. I remember back in college when I was applying for my first position and I applied to 150 different jobs and I only got two interviews and one job offer. Those are pretty bad odds. And once I had a little experience on my resume, I started getting interviews on more than half of the applications I submitted. Now on the topic of switching jobs, it's very important that whenever you change jobs, you leave on good terms. Most most industries are a lot smaller than you think, and you never know when you're gonna be looking for a job at a company you've already worked for or with people you've worked with before. So always try to leave a good impression with people that you work with, and it's only gonna help you when you go forward with your career. Now, the second lesson I learned is to never make a lateral move when changing jobs. And what I mean by this is that any new job that you accept should be for a promotion or some form of step up in roles and responsibilities. This is actually a rule that I set for myself because I foolishly made a lateral move from company one to company two. Without getting into the details, I thought I would be eligible for a promotion after about a year there, but guess what? I wasn't. So my takeaway from that experience is to always hold out for promotion when looking at new jobs. Now, most companies have some form of guidelines for years of experience required for each level or labor grade within the company. And the best time to switch companies is when you have about a year less experience than they're looking for. A lot of companies will hire people that are close enough to the experience requirement and you can essentially get an early promotion. But quite often, these exceptions are only for new employees at the company and will be much harder to get once you're already employed there. Another note that you might have picked up on when I was going through my story is that the big raises are much more likely to occur when you're changing companies. It's unfortunate that this is the way the world works right now because I do really think that sticking around a company for a while and having that loyalty is great, but it isn't the best way to advance your career in today's world. The one internal promotion that I got at company number one resulted in a 10% raise, yet a lateral move to company number two got me an 18% raise, and then a promotion by moving to company number three yielded a 27% raise. So it's really important to remember that the big increases are going to come from switching companies. The next lesson I learned is to always negotiate. The only exception to this is with your first job, as most of the time you have no real bargaining power in the situation. So I did not try to negotiate with company number one because I thought it was a pretty good offer and would give me great experience. Now with company number two, I did try to negotiate because their offer was actually below what I thought I was worth at the time. But they actually refused and told me that it was the best that they could offer at the time. So I accepted anyway and seriously regretted it. And from that, I said to myself, never take a job with a company that won't negotiate with you at all ever again. No initial offer from a company is truly the most that they're willing to pay to fill that position. And I now realize that any company not willing to budge at all on salary is probably not worth working for. Odds are that that mentality is not gonna change once you're in the door and you're just setting yourself up to be more disappointed further down the road. Now, when it comes to actually negotiating, you have to have a good idea of what you think the position is actually worth. Do some research, ask friends and coworkers in similar positions what they make so you have a better idea of expectations. Talking about salary used to be taboo, but that's mostly because employers don't want their employees being that open with each other and having some of them realize how one paid they are. So once you have an idea of what you think the position is worth, take that to the negotiation. So for example, my initial offer from company number three was a 22% raise, which is still great. However, based on the responsibilities of the position and my experience, 
I figured there was still some wiggle room there. In these situations, I think it's best just to ask for a little more. Not too much, but just enough to see if they really want you. In this case, I asked for 4% more, and they accepted with no counteroffer. In the end, I was thrilled to accept the offer from a company that clearly saw the value that I could provide and wasn't trying to pay bottom dollar to fill the position. And I think this bodes well for my future with company number three. Another lesson I learned is to avoid getting pigeonholed early in your career. At companies one and two, I did essentially the same job day to day, but my position at company number three is a bit more generic and more widely available throughout the industry. I've learned that after about five years of doing a very specific job, you start to get stuck in that role. When looking around at other positions, don't be afraid to look at similar jobs outside of your industry or just totally different jobs within your industry. Okay, let's summarize what I hope you learned from this video in order to increase your own salary in your first five to 10 years in the workforce. I think it boils down to three main things. One, change jobs every one and a half to three years and don't be afraid to try something new. Two, only accept new jobs that are promotions with fairly substantial salary increases. And three, always negotiate negotiate salary. But with that said, that's all for today. Leave a comment down below and let me know if these tips have worked for you in your own career or if you have other rules or lessons learned from your own experiences. Regardless, thanks for watching and consider hitting the like button or subscribing if you found this information useful.